So uh, give me a, a percentage that you would say right now we're in the first week of July. Um, what's the percentage you would give Jerry Neely to make this squad? Welcome back, Chiefs fans to All Chiefed Up. I am Steve. I'm here with Mike. Today we're going to be talking to you about another UDFA running back slash wide receiver from Ole Miss, Jerry and Ely. Uh, so we signed Jerry and Ely as a UDFA. I was kind of pumped. I was hoping that we'd take him late in the draft. I think I even mocked it. Um, but yeah, as soon as I, as soon as the draft was over, I was like, hey, let's grab him. Let's grab Justin Ross. And that's, I was two for two on those two guys. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, you were one of the guys that mocked Jerry and Ely to us probably like 4,000 times in round I seven. did. I, I thought he would be a good fit. <laughs> Like, it was every mock draft. He would write me and be like, hey, what about this mock draft? And I'd be like, dude, if you put Jerry and Ely in the seventh round. Hey, I had time, a feeling. I had a feeling he was going to be on this team. So, hey, sometimes you just know. But we'll go ahead and get started, man. Jerry and Ely. Jerry and Zawoski Ely. <laughs> Report to the principal's office, Jerry and Zawoski. Jerry and get your ass up here in front of the class and do your presentation. He was born August 19th in the year 2000. He is currently 21 years old. Uh, he was born in Walnut Grove, Mississippi. Uh, he stayed in Mississippi all the way up to high school. He played at Jackson Prep in Flowood, Mississippi. Had a massive high school career. Um, he finished his high school career with uh, 5,000 yards and 84 touchdowns. So, I mean, great, great uh, running back in high school. Um what is he, 5'8", 185 pounds, so he's not the biggest guy in the world. He's pretty small, and I think he only ran a 4'5", 240 at the combine, so I actually thought he was faster than that. Like, uh, everything I saw, I thought he was like a 4'4", maybe lower type guy, but a 4'5", 2 at the combine, so not as fast as I thought. So, uh, of course, Jerry Neely went on to play at Ole Miss. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school, and he also plays ba or played baseball at Ole Miss as well. Uh, so do you have anything on him from Ole Miss? Um, I do know that this is the, the best stat I could find about Jerry Neely. I thought maybe people wouldn't know. Um, he set the freshman Ole Miss record for all-purpose yards in a single game against southeastern Louisiana. Um, he recorded 273 all-purpose yards, six receiving yards, 95 rushing yards, but he had 172 kickoff return yards, and he became the first Ole Miss player to have a kickoff return TD and a rushing TD in the same game since 1990. So that, I think, is why he is on this Chiefs roster now, because he brings a little bit of special teams help. Yeah, And that is needed now that Tyreek is out the door because sometimes he would get back there and return some kicks in certain situations. So right. I believe Jerry Neely has a small chance to make this roster either as a wide receiver, as you had spoke about off camera, you thought maybe he could slide into a wide receiver slot. Maybe. He's or my a dark running horse back pick. Slot. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, look, if Justin Ross don't have the speed burst, he can't separate. They want to give him some time. And then Justin Watson, who everybody's loving on right now, if he don't make the team because he's vanilla, maybe Jerry Neely is that dark horse. He's going to slide in there and get a running back or, uh, I mean, a wide receiver position. And he still offers your kick return and he can run out of the backfield. So, yeah, we'll get to more on that in a minute. But going to Ole Miss, uh, they were very, very pumped on uh, Jerry and Ely because uh, actually right after high school, he was an MVP of the 2019 Under Armour All-American game. Had a lot of great players in it. And uh, he actually did all his damage on the ground, running the ball, 116 yards and two touchdowns. So uh, very good running back prospect. I mean, yeah. not counting all the other stuff. It's it's funny he only ran a 4-5-2 because when you watch him on film, he plays so much faster. Like he was a breakaway yeah. home run threat on every play. That was a huge pro I wrote down for him, actually. Yeah, for sure. So, right before we get into these pros and cons, because that's what I want to do next, I would like to note he was drafted in the 31st round of the Major League Baseball draft to the Arizona Diamondbacks. So he's, he's a two-sport kind of guy. So, I mean, dude can play baseball. Yeah. He's just all around athletic. But let's go ahead and get into some of those pros, Mike. Tell me what you liked about Jerry Neely. First and foremost, he has good burst and speed. I just told you that. I felt like he could hit a home run on any given time. He's very elusive. Um, he turns the corner very smoothly. He excels very smoothly. He's got very quick feet, and then he had a great eye. He's got good vision in the hole. He can get through it. He can make people miss. 
And being five eight, he's kind of has that Clyde factor where sometimes he can get lost. Like linebackers don't see him, and the, until it's too late, and then he kind of right. like bursts through and it's gone. So those were some of the pros I had for him. I'm on the same page as you. One big pro I have that we talked about already is he can rush the ball, he can receive, and he is a kick returner, and he's good at all of them. Uh, also, like you said, he makes people miss. You don't catch Jerry Neely in open field. He's going to make you miss your tackles. Uh, cornerback safeties they have fits with them out in the open field and then one major major pro that i have with him is he has very very sticky hands like i mean he's got the hands of a wide receiver like when you throw him the ball he's going to catch it uh so i think that's huge for what we could possibly be wanting to use him for in kansas city uh on to some of his cons like you were saying mike he's a smaller guy so sometimes he's uh, gets lost in the interior and that can be an advantage, but it's also a double-edged sword because uh, I noticed that he's not big enough to break any tackles in the interior. So if they get their hands on him, he's done for. Uh, he really, really struggled when he played Alabama last year uh, because those big guys down there, they just, if he got in the interior, he wasn't breaking any tackles. Uh, his burst is not that great. He is a fast guy, but he runs one speed all the time. He's kind of like Isaiah Pacheco in that sense. Like it's just balls to the wall. He's going to run that same speed all the time. He, he, he's not very great at, um, you know, letting things develop in front of him. He don't have that patience yet. Uh, and his burst is just kind of average. So even when he does kind of come to a stop and wait for a second, it's like, he, he's not the, the quickest getting off, uh, back into that run. So that, that's kind of the things that I, I saw as a knock on Jaron Ely. What did you see, Mike? Well, obviously I think you have to put his size at a five, eight, one ninety, in the NFL, it, you, when they get their hands on you, it's going to hurt being 5'8", 190. There's only so many hits you're going to be able to take like that. So he's a situational guy. So I don't. he's never going to be a three, but a three down back. It's not going to happen. Um, he's got a lean frame, too. He's not even the over, you know, like he's not built like the bowling ball. He's not the overly muscular kid either. Um, his pass, pass protection needs a little bit of work. Right. Um, he does struggle in pass protection. And then um, – he had to have shoulder, shoulder surgery in 2019, and he's had some concussions. So he does have a little bit of injury history, kind of like Justin Ross. Not as serious as Justin Ross, don't get me wrong, but but still, he had a little shoulder surgery that actually caused him to miss one, an entire season of baseball at Ole Miss over that shoulder surgery. So, yeah, yeah, he's – he, he's just, a, I think all that attributes to just being kind of a smaller guy, you know, well, yeah, he's going so. to take hits and it's going to hurt. Like you said, uh, he, he does need to work on his pass protection. And I think a lot of that that I noticed on his tape was the fact that he was 5'8". He's smaller. He couldn't see over the line. He missed a lot of those blitzing linebackers and stuff and didn't get over there to make that block because he didn't even see them coming. So, I mean, uh, I think that Jerry Neely has a good chance of making this squad um you know, as a special teams guy. And I think he could be a great slot receiver if they need him to be one. So uh, give me a, a percentage that you would say right now, we're in the first week of July. Um, what's the percentage you would give Jerry Neely to make this squad? Like 20%, 30%? I want to give him at least 30%. I'd say he's got a one in three chance. Like I said earlier, I think if you, uh, if you look at Justin Ross and Justin Watson, if neither of those guys make this squad, that that makes Jerry and Ely's chances go way up. And not uh, for the obvious that there's just less competition. But I think that if, you know, the, the coaches are not looking for, you know, just a big, solid route runner that's not that fast and stuff like that, which Justin Watson is fast, don't get me wrong on that. But if they're looking for something a little bit different, a little bit smaller, a little bit more elusive, then they might go with uh, Ely. So do you think they use um, Ely kind of like uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots use James White, like strictly yes. just to come in and catch passes and maybe even throw the dude in the slot sometimes? Yeah, that's a that's a, a great uh, comp right there, actually. Uh, and speaking of comps, uh, oh. I, I comped <laughs> Jerry and Ely to Kenyon Drake. I mean, he's a little bit smaller than Kenyon Drake, but he offers you a lot of the same things. He runs the ball well, but he's also a great receiving back. And if you watched any of Kenyon Drake's tape before, you've noticed that he's excels catching the ball out of the backfield. That's where a lot of his big plays come from. And I see that a lot with Jerry and Ely. Did you get a chance to comp him to anybody, Mike? Um, I give him the comp of Gio Bernard. Played in Cincinnati for a while. He's now playing with the Bucks. Um, 
Gio Bernard, they're built differently. I think Gio Bernard is, um, he may be a little taller. I don't know if he's taller than five, eight or not, but I do know he's more stocky. He's uh, yeah. That's he, what I was going to say. He's going to take some hits, you know, so that's the difference, but the way he's utilized, I believe will be similar to a Gio Bernard, a third down change of pace back. Somebody that can catch the ball, uh, try to get them the ball in space on the edges, let them go, let them be shifty. I think that's what they'll do with him. I don't know. I don't know if he'll make this team or not, but it, it, he could. He could make the team. It really just depends on what the coaches are looking for with the way they're going to run the offense this year. But I do think that having the ability to return kicks, it's kind of like Pacheco. They they both offer you that special teams uh, stuff, and that's going to help them. That's going to go a long way. So, guys, if you learned anything about Jaron Ely, you like Jaron Ely, like this video. Thanks so much for subscribing and hitting that bell so you get notifications when we come out with more. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything we're going to do as far as the draft and UDFAs go. So thanks for tuning in on this series. I have a playlist on YouTube here where you can click it. You can see all of them. You can watch them all if you want to do that. Share it with your friends that want to know more about these new Chiefs. People's been enjoying the Leo Chanel. They've been enjoying Brian Cook. Um, oddly enough, one of the the lowest, you know, viewed ones is Sky Moore. I don't think Chiefs Kingdoms is pumped on Sky Moore as they are as they should be. They need to be. They need to be. I don't get it. But like yeah, Justin guess. Justin Ross has got more hype to this point than Sky Moore. I think Sky Moore is going to have something to say about that. I think he will too. But I think it, I don't think it's just because people are. I think it's because it's expected with Sky Moore, and they think that Justin Ross is like you know the little. Maybe. One last thing on Jerry Neely. His middle name is Zawaski. 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 It sounds like a cop on like a 1980s sitcom. Like, go get Detective <laughs> Zawaski. Yeah. The really, the real a ho that rides a motorcycle and pulls you over for going five over. <laughs> Zawaski. They're like, oh, here comes Zawaski. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us, guys. We'll catch you next time. Peace.